All right. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Today is our text, just two verses again. You'll see why. So I'll ask you to stand if you're able. If not, where you're seated is fine. You can follow along as I read. The Apostle Peter is continuing now in this, the last chapter of his final letter. And I guess maybe this is as good of a time as any to confess. I have a confession to make. Uh, Really? Yeah. Ooh, what's the pastor going to confess? Yeah. Wow. I'm going to confess to you that I have been looking forward to these two verses for quite some time now. Are you let down? Well, you'll see why. So the Apostle Peter, verse 3, by the Holy Spirit says, first of all, you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming He promised? Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. And they say it just like that too. (laughs) Hey, let's pray. We really need to pray actually. And (laughs) Father in heaven, thank You. Lord, thank You for this passage that we have before us this morning. We need though for You to settle our hearts and quiet our minds. Our minds are always so busy and distracted because we want to give you our undivided attention, especially on this matter, because it obviously rises to the level of being important enough for Peter in his parting words to talk about it. So we need to talk about it. So Lord, as we do, would you, by the Holy Spirit, as only you can, be our teacher. And as our teacher, Lord, I pray that we're teachable, that we would not just be hearers of your word merely, but doers of your word, that we would take heed to your word. Lord, we ask you for this. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. You can be seated. Thank you. So guess what we're talking about today. So I I chose this title for a reason. I'm not trying to be, you know, snarky. First of all, I don't have to try. It comes very easily. Thank you very much. But the reason I chose this title is because It seems that in the last days, according to this prophecy from Peter, that there are those who are saying that, no, the Lord's not coming. And not only do they say the Lord's not coming, they mock those who still, keyword, believe that He is. And we're going to see this come leaping off the pages of our Bible today, I pray, because of all things it's this. And the enemy does this, why? Because he knows this is our only hope. And if he can get the Christian on this, he's got them because He wants to steal your hope. Jesus said the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. What does He want to steal and kill and destroy? He wants to steal your joy. He wants to kill your hope. And He wants to destroy you. Once He gets us in that hopeless state, He's got us. And that's why this rises to the level of Peter, by the Holy Spirit, taking and tackling this tough topic head on. And I'm so glad he does. 
I mean, this is again one of the reasons why I've been so looking forward to this. If for no other reason other than this, if you're anything like me, and I suspect that you are, you've had your fair share of these mockers mocking you. And it gets so bad sometimes, and I, I wish it weren't so, and I'm just as guilty of it as anyone else, I suppose. But they're so ridiculing of us, we kind of tone it down, especially when we're around them, because they mock us. They laugh at us, and they ridicule us. And here we are longing for, looking to, watching for the Lord's return at any time. I've made this comment before, I suppose maybe in some ways it's apropos to share it again. And this is not hyperbole, I mean this literally. If it were not for the sound doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture and the imminent return of Jesus Christ, I would lose my mind. If you take that hope from me, it's game over for me. This is the only thing that gets me out of bed in the morning, knowing, hoping, oh. remember now, that's because we're local. Oh. It could be today. And then it's the only thing that helps me when I put my head on the pillow at night, knowing maybe tomorrow, maybe tonight. I mean, He's going to come as a thief in the night. So yeah, how about tonight? This would be a good time. We actually talked about that in the update. So wouldn't it stand to reason that of all the things that the enemy would want to steal from you, it would be this? Would you agree that He's been met with a measure of success in these last days, exactly as Peter has prophesied here? You know, it's kind of interesting, because every time I talk about the pre-trib rapture, I get inundated from all over. Uh, I realize many of them are trolls online. Uh, many are not. I presume that some are actually brothers and sisters in Christ. And I mean, it is so vicious and so vitriolic, and I'll even add vile. And it, it's, it's almost like, so I can't talk about the rapture? No, there's not going to be a rapture. Uh, my Bible says there is. Amen. Well, you better buck up and hunker down, because we're going to go through the tribulation. That's not what my Bible says. I think about 1 Thessalonians 4, where the Apostle Paul, in teaching this young church filled with new believers, Bible prophecy, specifically the pre-tribulation rapture, teaches them, writes to them, that when that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we who are alive and remain are going to be caught up, harpazo in the Greek, Greek, rapturus in the Latin, raptured up to meet the Lord in the air. And at the end of that, he says this, therefore encourage one another with these words, as you are even now doing. Now stay with me. If the rapture was not before the seven year tribulation, that would be cruel. Okay, the rapture is going to be after you're beheaded. Um, you know, a third of the population is going to die. And you know, be encouraged and encourage one another with, <laughs> really? You just scared the living daylights out of me. Well, wait a minute. What about what Jesus said to the church of Philadelphia in Revelation chapter 3? He says, because you have kept my 
my word and not denied my name as others have, I'm going to keep you from the hour of tribulation that is coming upon the whole world. That's a seven year tribulation. Just hold on. Behold, I, I'm coming quickly. Just hang on. I know you're barely hanging on. I know you have little strength, but just hang in there. Man, I'm coming. I'm going to take you out of this lost and dying evil world, and I'm going to catch you up to be with me. Just hang on. All right. I'm hanging on. How much longer? <laughs> So again, the reason I chose the title, we're still in the introduction, we'll, we'll get there. But the reason I, I chose this title is because despite what people are saying, and what people are saying is what Peter is saying people will be saying. Does that come out right? I sure hope so. <laughs> despite what people are saying about our blessed hope, our only hope, guess what? it's still happening. So there. Let's close in prayer, right there. No. And the mocking ensues, and the scoffing and the ridiculing. What I'd like to do, if you'll kindly allow me to, is address why they mock, of course what they mock, and how they mock the Lord's return in the rapture of the church. Let's start with why, verse 3. Why they scoff and ridicule exposes them for who they are and what they do or want to do. Notice he he says they, they do this because they want to continue following their own evil desires. Uh, now Peter's going to expound on this in the following verses in the remainder of the chapter, but what he writes here in verse 3 sums it up perfectly. It makes sense now, doesn't it? Watch this. If you remove the return of Jesus Christ, then so too do you remove judgment. In other words, I don't have to stand before the Lord if He's not returning. I won't be judged by the Lord if He's not returning. So in order for me to continue living this lifestyle, this sinful life, and in order for me to continue to have license, a permit, if you will, to live this way, I got to get rid of the Lord's return. Because if I get rid of the Lord's return, then I get rid of the Lord's judgment. And that's why. That's why they ridicule. So don't take it personally, by the way. That's easier said than done, isn't it? when somebody mocks you and ridicules you and laughs at you, 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 you still believe in that? And then here's, here's how we are, these great men and women of faith. We're like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, is that bad? Yeah. I mean, who does that? Well, I used to. <laughs> You see what's happened? This is the insidious, subtle, satanic, <laughs> I just get one in there. This is his tactic. Because again, he, if he knows he can get us on this, he's got us. Because if the Lord's not coming <laughs> soon, then, wow. I mean, joy of the Lord. <laughs> Where's my hope? Where am, in what will or in whom will I place my hope if it's not in Jesus and His soon return from me? 
So now all of a sudden it's like forbidden because I'm being mocked. I mean, think of it like this when you're a kid in school. How did you like to be bullied and ridiculed and teased and mocked? It's like that, only worse, because now you're an adult, or at least you're supposed to be. And you're, as an adult, you're, you're getting, it's the same dynamic as when you're a child. Hey, just picture the scene with me. There you are, you're in the classroom, and all of your classmates are ridiculing you for what you say, do, where, you fill in the blank. So what happens to you? Now your pressure, they call it peer pressure, you're pressured to conform. So you fit in and are accepted, because you don't want to be the only one to stand alone. It is the most terrifying thing, especially for a child, and especially for a child of God. I will readily admit as a pastor that there have been many times, especially in the last three years, three years, not two, where I've, I've just thought, man, I am going to get it. This is not, uh, this is not what everyone else is talking about. And I'm just going to be mocked and ridiculed. And this is a true story. Uh, a pastor <laughs> uh, said of me, quote, his cheese gone slid off his cracker. Ow! Oh, really? That really hurts. No, no, take it personally. Wait, why would you say that to me? Why would you say that about me? Here I am, and I mean, I am like Paul writing to Timothy, I am longing for his return. And here's Paul at the end of his life saying, I know that what awaits me is I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I finished well, and now it's time for me to leave this earthly tent. And he knew it, and he was, his days were numbered. And any, any time now he was going to leave. And this is his parting words to Timothy. He says, I know what awaits me, a crown of righteousness. And not just me, by the way, but all of those who long, long for His appearing, not, not coming. There's a delineation. And you'll see it throughout Scripture. It's His coming and His appearing. That, if that's the same thing, then that's redundant. No, there's a distinction between the second coming and His appearing. At the rapture, He doesn't come he appears and catches us up. It's been said that when the rapture happens, Jesus comes for us. And when the second coming happens at the end of the seven years, Jesus comes with us as His bride by His side, ten thousands by His side. So you're telling me that this is kind of, um, you'll forgive the uh, phrase, not kosher. It's not, uh, this is not, um, you know, you're going outside the box. Why don't you tone it down? Tone it down? I'm going to be caught up. Why would I tone it down? I want to scream this from the rooftop. And I basically do that every week, and I spit on everybody in the front row too. I mean, if this is true, right, think about it, right? If this is true, and it is, wouldn't we want to, I mean, you, you couldn't contain me. You shouldn't be able to contain me. 
and don't cower and falter and shrink back because they do this, because that's exactly what the enemy wants. You know, some of us, and you know who you are, you don't have to, I'll try not to look at anybody when I say this, but you know, it, it strengthens in a sanctified way your resolve. And it's kind of like, oh yeah? You're going to try to squelch or my zeal and my passion and my excitement for the Lord? Well, I'm going to double down. How about that? That's what I mean by sanctify. I'm trying not to look at anybody when I say that, but you, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's kind of like the very reason that you're doing this is the very reason that I need to, instead of shrinking back, I need to double down. No, He's still coming. And by the way, sir, ma'am, be respectful. I mean, you can have a little bit of edge on it when you do. But just when they say, where's the promise of His coming? I've been hearing about that all my life. My great, 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 great grandfather's dog thought it was in his lifetime. He's not coming. Um, I used to be kind of militant. Some of you are saying, used to be. <laughs> okay, maybe I still am, again, in a sanctified way. But the next time they say that, open up Second Peter chapter 3. Ah, wait, say that again. <laughs> Bring it. What'd you say? Ah. That's what God's Word says you would say. So actually, keep saying it, because if you keep saying that about the Lord's return, that means that we're closer to the Lord's return. So come on, let's do this. <laughs> Is that weird? That's what Peter's saying. And we miss it oftentimes, don't we? I mean, right out of the chute, he says, <laughs> You must remember, keyword, did you forget? That in the last days, are we in the last days? You better believe we're in the last days. We're in the last hour. He said, this is what they will say. Okay, let's see if we can connect a couple dots here. Okay, so someone says that, not just someone, everyone says that last days, they'll be saying this. We must be in the last days, because they're saying this. Is that too elementary? But that's why. Because they, they don't want to stand before the very God that they have removed. And again, Peter's going to expound on this, but this just hits the proverbial nail on the head as to the reason why. They want to continue living these sinful lives and following their evil desires. But they've got a problem because Jesus is coming back. And if Jesus is coming back, then I'm going to stand and give an account. So that's the problem. So what are we going to do? Well, we got to get rid of His coming back. That's why. Make sense? All right. Let's talk about what. Well, now this would seem to be a firm grasp of the obvious, but not so fast. Of all the things that Satan will key in on, zero in on, and mock, it's this? What does that tell you? I mean, isn't there quite a long list of things that we can be mocked for. Why specifically the Lord's return? Ah. I'm going to take it a step further, if you don't mind. But as we get closer to the pre-tribulation rapture, the attacks on the pre-tribulation rapture have escalated off the charts. 
there's a reason. You know what that reason is? Have you noticed that there's no attack on mid-trip? No, right? How about post-trip? For the life of me, I'm going to attack it right now. <laughs> that is, to me, post, after the seven-year tribulation, is the rapture. Wow, it's going to be like a bungee cord jump. You know, we're, going to, we're raptured up, but then it's the coming. We come back down. <laughs> anyway, that's, I don't mean to be mean, but that is just ludicrous, man. But why, why does, why is everyone always picking on me in my pre-trib rapture? Because it's pre-trib. No, stay with me. <laughs> what they ridicule is the very thing that authenticates and validates that which they ridicule. This is a textbook case of the counterfeit actually authenticating the genuine by virtue of the fact that one only mocks the truth. Let me see if I can, by way of an example and comparison, why is it only the name of Jesus that people take and curse? When was the last time you ever heard anyone say, Oh, Buddha? I know that's silly, but you got the point, right? No, they're not going to do that with Buddha, because Buddha is not God. Jesus is. Amen. You know, I have a, 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 God has done a profound work in my heart towards Muslims over the years, being, being from the Middle East, you know, see. And uh, that was one of the most moving things for me, was when we talked and you showed me the location of the school, right there next to a mosque. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But nobody will ever dare to speak ill of Muhammad. Am I right? Why? Because Muhammad is a false prophet, and Allah a false God. And by the way, Allah is not the title God, it's the name of their false God. So when you say Allah, you're not saying God, you're saying the name of their God. And Allah is not the same as Jehovah, Jehovah God. So again, back to the comparison. So isn't it true then that when somebody takes the name of yours and my Jesus in vain like that, what are they saying? He's the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, not a way, the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. That's why. See, I'm not going to bother attacking a false God. <laughs> I'm not going to. It would be akin to a counterfeiter counterfeiting a $70 bill. I hope you got that, because again, that's, that's as good as it gets. That's all I got. Why do they only counterfeit a $100 bill? Because <laughs> the $100 bill is genuine. Does not then the counterfeit authenticate and validate the genuine? So then it makes sense again, that of all things, they would mock this. And that should encourage every single one of us. Thank you. Mocker, scoffer, ridiculer. Is this, that's a word. We just made it up. I'll let you fill in the blanks with whatever words. Be, be nice now. Don't use bad words. But no, actually, because every time you do that, you're, you're validating and verifying and authenticating that my Jesus and His return is the truth. P 
period. And that's what of all things the attack is against. And when I say all things, I mean, it's quite a long list again. You can go down that list if you want. But um, this, this is the one thing? Well, I think that's very telling. Well, I want to spend the remainder of our time on this third one in the second part of verse 4, and it's the how. <laughs> how they mock us. So we know why, we know what, but when it comes to how, ooh, How, how do they mock the rapture and the second coming? By the way, I'm, you don't have a second coming without the, without the rapture. You don't have the rapture without the second coming. Are we good with that? Okay. So here's how they do it. They say it won't happen because it hasn't happened. Did you catch that? Now at first you're like, well, it's still going to happen. No, but it hasn't happened. So it's not going to happen. Okay, in what universe is that logical? Does that make any sense at all? So wait, let me, let me see if I got this straight, Mr. Mocker, Mrs. Scoffer. We're going to personify them now, I guess. Let me see if I got this straight. You're telling me that just because what God in His Word said would happen, now won't happen, because heretofore it hasn't happened? Did you follow that? (laughs) Because if you're saying that, and they are, then it sounds to me like what is happening or is not happening supersedes the Word of God. Because this is the final word. If God said it, that settles it. This is why it is, and I, I talked a little bit about this in the update today, and please hear me on this. We live in a day that is most unforgiving of not knowing the Word of God and the God of the Word. So here comes someone like this, I guess Mr. Mocker and Mrs. Scoffer. And we're just, you were just like, oh, oh, he's not? Yeah, he hasn't come. Where's where's his coming that he promised? He hasn't, he's not coming. Oh, he's not? Come on. Oh, you think he's not coming because he hasn't come? Oh no, I, here, sit down. We got, we we need to talk. No, he's coming. How do you know? Because he said so. He promised. Isn't it interesting that Peter is careful by the Holy Spirit to use the word, where is this promised coming? Do you see how subtle that is? It has at the core of it, God broke His promise. Does that sound a little bit like the serpent in the garden? Half God said. And see, if I don't know the Word of God and the God of the Word, I'm going to start questioning doubting and wavering back and forth, tossed to and fro, back and forth. I don't want to. Now, if there was ever a time to be solid and sound in the Word of God, that time is now. Because this is going to get worse, by the way. This is going to get worse. I mean, it's bad enough now, if you can imagine, it's going to get even worse. And you had better, I had better be at the ready. So when, not if, they come and say, half God promised, 
half gods. Yeah, I know that's what the Bible says, but look around. Everything goes on as it has. There's been all, I, you guys have been saying this for how many years? Oh, but God promised, promised us He was going to come back. Where is the promise of His coming? And that's how they do it. And I mean, I think if we're honest with ourselves, we would have to admit that this is the worst, if I can, for lack of a better way of saying it. And the enemy knows that. And this is what I mean by we had better be solid and firm and strong on the foundation of God's Word. So when the mocking storms hit, and they will hit, we don't fall and crash. We're standing strong. Because again, if we're honest with ourselves, we would have to admit that they can get to us on this one. How so? Well, there is some questioning now. Yeah, so I wonder now. You start questioning and, and doubting, and here's the biggie. Now you're a little bit confused. Who's the author of confusion? So yeah, so yeah, great. I got you guys doing this now. <laughs> What have I done to you? I'm so sorry. But see, he's the author of confusion and the father of life. So if, if he can just plant one seed of doubt and you start getting a little bit confused, it will germinate and sprout. And the next thing you know, well, I'm not so sure now. And if you're in the I'm not so sure now, camp. I say this in love. I feel very sorry for you. Why do I feel sorry for you? I mean, it's a, there's a sanctified pity. I, I actually feel sorry for you. And I pity you. Because if you're not settled on this, there's maybe a question mark about this. And the enemy has succeeded in getting you to become almost um, sarcastic now. Oh, I don't want to talk. Christians. Yeah, I don't want to talk about the rapture. I got my hopes up. He didn't come in, what year was that? 1998. Some of you guys weren't, whatever. <laughs> Remember that? No, 88. Pardon me, 88. 88 reasons Jesus is coming back in 88. And He didn't. So the guy that wrote that had to regroup. So he came out with a new book. You can still find the 88 book, I think pretty cheap. So 89, 89 reasons Jesus is coming back in 89. You see what's happened, right? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah right. No, He's not. And then it, it doesn't help when a guy like Harold Camping, remember him? Oh my goodness, 2012. May, I think it was. May 22nd, I think. Am I right? Is anybody? You, you don't want to know. You don't want to remember. <laughs> it's, got, it's hard on guys like me, guys like that. They make my job really difficult. Because the first thing you should know, and this is what Peter is saying, you must know, you, you should know by now, that if anybody says it's on this date, they're wrong. Because <laughs> no man knows the day they are. Oh, you? Wow. You got the inside scoop on this? Yeah, this is that whole thing of God showed me. Wow. I wish you would have showed me. God told me, you know. 
reverb, King James. Don't start doing that too. No. Uh, see, because once, the proverb says it like this, hope deferred makes a heart sick. Don't you think the enemy knows that? So we get our hopes up. It's the blessed hope. And then, oh, we want the Lord to come back. And then uh, He doesn't. There have been a couple of times over the years where I've really gotten excited. <laughs> I mean, here we are in 2023. I'm like, I think this is it. <laughs> anyway, be careful here. You can just call me JD Camping if you want. But but there's been a couple times where I just thought, you know, this could be it. And I've really got my hope up. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. You know, the, the people that are the most vicious when it comes to attacking the sound doctrine of the pre-trib rapture, you know what their argument is? And, and Peter is hitting it head on here. Their argument is, when it doesn't happen, no, no, it's still going to happen. No, but when it doesn't happen, everybody's going to be let down and they're going to fall away. And that's the great falling away in 2 Thessalonians 2. Oh, it is, is it? Well, that's kind of ironic, because in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, it's not the falling away, it's the catching away. It's not a departure from the faith, it's a departure from the earth. <laughs> I love it when God does that. They use that verse, that's your go-to, that, oh, so now the rapture can't happen until there's first a falling away. <sighs> Great. We've got to wait. And then, by the way, how are we going to gauge the falling? There's always been people departing from the faith and falling away. That doesn't make any sense at all. And it doesn't fit in the context. The whole context of that letter is about the rapture. Again, let me just take it one step further. They'll attack the pre-trib rapture specifically because they want us in some way to start. It's kind of like the kid in the classroom again. It, it's, it, they've done these experiments. You've probably seen it in a different context where they get all this, the, the students, the pupils to agree to raise their hand that two plus two equals five. And you're going, no, it doesn't. And so everyone's hand is raised but yours. And you're looking around, and they're looking at you like, what's up? You're holding out? Yeah, because that's not true. Two plus, but they found that the pressure is so intense that the child will eventually just raise their hand. That's what this is about. That's what this is about. I'm not going to raise my hand. I'm going to raise my hand. Yeah, but you know, Pastor J.D., you've been talking about the rapture for years. I know. <laughs> my favorite topic, by the way, in case you didn't know. And I'm going to keep talking about it. There is coming a time when I won't. <laughs> yeah, because it will have happened. One last thing and we're done. And I appreciate your patience. Would you agree that when we have this to look forward to, it makes whatever we're going through easier to get through? Can I flip it around? What if we didn't have this to look forward to? What are you going through? There goes my hope, not just my blessed hope. And by the way, blessed hope, Titus 2.13 is not, oh, I sure hope. No, it's more like this. The raptures are only hope. If we're still holding out hope for this world, how about this, this nation? 
then your hope isn't in the Lord. Whoever puts his hope in the Lord will never be disappointed. Let's flip it around. Whoever puts their hope in anything or anyone but the Lord will absolutely be disappointed. See, if I know I have this hope to hang on to, cling on to for dear life, <laughs> eternal life, then it puts everything into perspective. And I'll say it again, we're living in a day and a time that if you don't have this hope, I honestly don't know how you do it. I really don't. And again, I'm not trying to be mean. I, I mean this sincerely. The Lord knows my heart. But if, if you don't have this hope that the rapture can happen at any time, how do you do that? Because I don't know what I would do without that. And please, 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 I know I said one last thing, but this is one last, last thing. Please, and I, I beg you, please, I beseech you, stop putting anything or anyone in front of the rapture, because when you do that, you delay my Master's coming. Don't do that. Oh, we got to have revival first. We talked about that in the update. We do? Uh-oh. Wow, he's not coming back for a long time, because I'm, I'm looking around. There ain't no revival. No, there's one in Kentucky now. Yeah, we, the first service, just I'll leave it there. No, we got we to gotta take dominion over education and government and all of this first. We do? Oh no, shoot me now. Put me out of my misery. What am I going to do now? You mean he's, he is, he, it's not that he's not going to come, it's that he's not going to come yet. Because you just put something in front of the rapture of the church, and in so doing you have destroyed and dismantled the sound doctrine of imminence. What does imminence mean? I love this word kind of like one of those words that sounds like what it is, imminent. Any minute. Yeah. Try that again. Don't, don't start doing this one too. Any minute. It's imminent. Any minute. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Ha. Oh, again, ha. Oh. Now. All right. Thank you, Lord. I'm encouraged, I'm strengthened, I'm renewed in my hope, because it could be any minutes, any minutes. Okay, Capono, come on up any minute now. <laughs> Why don't you stand? We'll close in prayer and song. I, oh, oh man. Lord, you know that. Uh, could just keep going for hours on this. And I think I, when I say this and pray this, I do so representing my brothers and sisters here. We really do long for your return. And that's our hope, our only hope. Because we're living in a world now that is hopeless. This world is dying, it's lost. But you, O oh Lord, are coming to take us out of this world, because we're in this world, but not of this world. And Lord, we've fallen out of love with this world and the things of this world. And we renewed our love for you and your soon return. You did not create us for time. You created us for eternity. And this world is not our home. We're just passing through. We're here but for a short while. Our lives are, like James says, a vapor, a mist, a mist, just nothing. So short. And eternity is forever. So Lord, I just pray that 
as only you can by the Holy Spirit, that you'll just encourage the discouraged, renew hope in the hopeless, and strengthen the weak. Pray that we'll not leave here today the same way we came here today, knowing, knowing that you're coming. The rapture can happen at any time. Oh, Lord, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Maranatha, in Jesus' name.